So polyphasic sleep is when instead of sleeping at one big chunk at night, you sleep in lots of little chunks throughout a 24-hour period. 86% of mammals do it, and under the right circumstances, people will naturally do it too. People also sometimes do it when they want to sleep less total throughout a 24-hour period. In the 70s, scientists figured out that if you're going to be sleeping less than 5 hours a day, chances are the best way to do it healthily is to sleep polyphasically. But there are some things you should probably know about polyphasic sleep before you try to get into it. If you don't want to get into it, you'll have to pick a particular sleep schedule. There's the segmented sleep schedule, which humans naturally do when they're exposed to less than 10 hours of sunlight a day. That's basically when you just get up in the middle of the night and stay awake for like 3 hours. There's also the dual core sleep, which is similar to that, but you nap a little in the day as well. There's the siesta schedule, which is basically when you take a little nap in the day and sleep a little less at night. Scientists have found that this is actually better than normal monophasic sleep because it helps some of your motor memory. Then there's what's called the Everyman 3 schedule, which is basically when you sleep a little bit at night, but then you take naps throughout the day, usually about three of them. And scientists have found that when you take more than two naps, it stops having the great effect that taking a nap during the day usually has. But there's lots of anecdotal evidence to support the fact that every men's sleep schedule can actually be good for you. But as of right now, you should use caution if you're going to try to get into that. Then there's also the Uberman schedule, which is one of the most famous because Leonardo da Vinci apparently used it. That's when you sleep between 15 minutes and half an hour once every four hours, adding up to between two and four hours total sleep during the day. This is probably the greatest amount of awake time you can spend during a 24-hour period and have any sort of health benefit. It's also one of the best researched. Claudio Stampi has done a lot of research on it, and he talked to lots of sailors who solo sail across the ocean, and that takes quite a while and you need to spend a lot of time awake in order to actually get to the other side. A lot of sailors actually end up sleeping little naps and never sleeping a full night. And it works for them. He also did a series of studies on one guy where he would follow the Uberman schedule for a prolonged period of time, up to several months actually, and found that his functioning on a variety of tasks improved. But this could easily be explained by practice effect, which is where you just get better at something after you try it a lot, and he didn't really have a control group, he just compared it to the same guy's scores at different times, sleeping monophasically. But somebody should do a little more research before determining that the Uberman schedule is better than the other schedule. Plus the guy occasionally had a hard time waking up and would oversleep for almost an hour, which still only adds up to like 5 or 6 hours a day. But regardless of what sleep schedule you pick, you need to watch out for symptoms of sleep deprivation. You might have a lack of energy, difficulty concentrating, unstable moods, confusion, irritability, or you could just get in a car accident. You can eventually develop psychosis, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease. So don't get sleep deprived, and if you start feeling like you are sleep deprived, stop and do something different. Switch to a different schedule or just sleep at night. You also need to understand your circadian rhythm. Your body can basically tell what time it is based on all the things that are happening inside it. It relies on a bunch of things in order to do that properly. If your body sees that there's sunlight, then it's going to think it's day and think that you should try to be awake. If your body is taking in no light or low wavelength light, like red light, your body is going to know that it's about time to sleep. The red light thing is odd, and lots of scientists theorize that it might be because we evolved to sleep near fireplaces, which is just kind of interesting. But eating is important. Just trying to stay physically healthy by having a good diet will help a lot if you're going to try to sleep less. People who generally don't eat well have to sleep more, even if they are just monophasic. And your body can tell what time it is based on what kind of meal you're having. Lots of people, if they have a sugary breakfast, will know that they reliably have to get up at that time, and their body knows to expect sugar at that time as well. So if you're trying to get into a schedule where you have to wake up at, like, noon, then you're going to have to eat something kind of sugary at noon every day. Not sugary like syrupy, but sugary like root and actual good for you stuff. But either way you're going to have to be very persistent and consistent with your sleeping. The first week will probably be the hardest, second week won't be much better, but if your body knows when it should be sleeping then it will sleep during those hours. And the sailors who sailed across the ocean actually ended up getting better and better at getting into polyphasic sleep schedules the more they went across the ocean. A weird little thing that varies throughout the day is your tendency for sleep inertia. Most people will have difficulty getting up and still be drowsy for the first hour or so after they wake up, if they wake up at the wrong time. For most people that tends to be in the early morning, like 4am to 8am. For you it might be different. Your body will also just sleep different levels of efficiency at different hours. For instance, sleeping any time between 4am and like noon will probably be much more efficient and beneficial to your health and functioning than sleeping between 5pm and midnight. 
probably these things vary a lot from person to person. You might get the most sleep inertia at night for some reason, and you might sleep most efficiently in the morning. You just have to pay attention to what your body is responding well to and adjust to it. And that's the basics of how to get into a polyphasic sleep cycle. There's a lot of other information that would be really good to know and beneficial to read about, so I tried to send lots of links in the description. So it is really hard to get into a polyphasic sleep schedule, but if you stay healthy, stay consistent, and pay attention to what your body responds well to, you should be able to pull it off. And when you do, you might end up with like 18 to 20 hours of waking hours during your day, and then you can do all sorts of cool productive things. And it can just be a lot of fun.